Good afternoon, Professor Nada, and thank you for coming. We uh, will give you the introduction to this one, but I will give a bit more on the buffer. I am Shraddha. I did recently complete my second master's in general studies from Soaz University of London. Uh, it's been more than a decade uh, that I've worked as a journalist and in the development sector on the as a business incubator. I believe that uh, lived experiences can become foundation for education. And that is my attempt to produce knowledge based on that. Having said that, uh, my dissertation is titled I'm Not the Only One. It is an autoethnography on sexual harassment in public sphere. Before I begin this presentation, I would like to mention trigger warning. Trigger warning, you know, because this is a sensitive topic, and at any point if you feel uncomfortable or um, it triggers you, please you can feel free to leave. Only I also have a professional list of counselors or psychiatrists. If you want, I can provide to you on request after the session. That is if you require that. Having said that, I move forward. To start with, I will play an audio. It's a poem. It's just one stanza of the poem. Uh, this poem is about finding strength and courage within you. And uh, it's in a different language. So if you do not understand it, then this is the translation that I've put up. I just play this poem and then we carry on for and I will let you know also why this for you. talks about how it is, what we go through when we are sexually harassed, and the constant uh, requirement of proving ourselves that there was nothing wrong that we did, but that the per perpetrator has to be hold, held accountable instead of us, is the message that it keeps giving strongly. Before that, such messages hadn't come across. 
And even if we or I decided to speak up about it, the burden of proving that we were not at fault often forced us to keep a film on our lips. And when I was studying in London, I was walking on the streets and the idea and assumption was London is comparatively safer than India or Nepal. And suddenly I was harassed. As a 37 year old woman, I thought I would be able to speak up. I thought I was independent enough to say something, but I froze. I was back being that 17 year old who could not say anything. And suddenly, fear triggered in me that I did not know existed. So I spoke with the fellow students and colleagues around and they say, shared the same fear. The more questions I asked, the more questions followed. I did not find any answers, so I started reading a lot about it. And I read and found out that sexual harassment in public sphere is considered normal in Nepal. And it was, it was unbelievable for me. So that became the topic for my dissertation. I wanted to share my little experiences. So the method I chose became autoethnography. Now, autoethnography is was and is an ideal methodology for me because it puts self in the social context. Because what it does is a commonality is produced by bringing separate lives together through this methodology. However, the central criticism of this methodology is also that the self is emphasized. But the argument is the text purity is not threatened by the personal narrative. What it does is, because of the personal narrative, it reinforces the authenticity stronger. And moreover, I also wanted to validate the experiences, the lived experiences, and also exemplify that there was not just one or two persons that was going through this on a regular basis. So I also chose to interview six other women. And I wanted to draw the experiences parallel to mine. And while I, while I was conducting these interviews and keeping my experiences in mind, I uh, recognized few themes. And those themes became chapters for this dissertation. The first chapter being culture of science. Now, how does it start? How does culture of silence start? I'll just give you some bits of what the interviews shared. So Ashika, when she was harassed on a broad daylight, she confronted her perpetrator and he literally ridiculed her. She went to the police station to file the complaint. The police scoffed at her face, said it's an everyday occurrence and it's women's issues. So she should know how to deal with it. Sulochna always thought whenever she, fa she if she ever faces with such a situation, she'd be able to deal with it. She'd be able to confront the person. But instead, she froze. She froze and the most she could do was stare at, at the person who groped her. Sweta, on the other hand, she directly confronted the perpetrator when he touched her inappropriately in a public vehicle, but the fellow passengers ridiculed her and scolded her and said that if she's so uncomfortable in a public transportation, then she should buy her own vehicle. Why I'm giving these examples? Why I'm telling these stories? Why I'm sharing these incidences? This shows that culture of silence is gradual, is instilled in us. It does not happen suddenly. 
And one of the examples, especially our culture also adds on to it. It establishes the culture of silence. And one of the prime examples is menstruation. Why menstruation? Because menstruation teaches us to disembody our sexuality. And unfortunately, though it is a simple biological phenomena, it still makes people uncomfortable. The culture of silence, it keeps persisting, and there's a reason for that. The cultural assumption is that the public space or the urban space is predominantly owned by men. So what happens is, when women steps on the public space, it feels like she's stepping on somebody else's period, which automatically limits her access to it. An everyday example, I'm not sure whether you've observed here. If you haven't, I, would, uh, I urge you to notice. Just notice in a public transportation, how does a man and a woman occupy the space? How do they sit on the seats? The women will always be timid. The man will always be occupying the space. These small nuances, it's important to understand, understand these things because naturally we don't sit like this. Everybody wants to sit comfortably. These are very, it may seem and sound uh, perhaps uh, not important, but it's important to understand why this happens. And this culture of silence, it affects us. It affects us in a way where when women is sexually harassed, the biggest hit is on her dignity because immediately she feels like a filth. And the worst part is it doesn't take much for the harasser to make her feel that way. A stare, an entitled touch, an obnoxious smile is enough. Chapter 2, a title is shame. Let me explain uh, the first question that you can see on the screen. What does shame look like? I explain this uh, with an incident that I've also mentioned on my dissertation. A few years ago, I was having a meeting. And just casually, while the meeting was going on, my boss casually decided to graze his hand on my thigh. I gave the benefit of the doubt. And suddenly, his hand was on my knee, on the nape of my neck. I was uncomfortable. I was disgusted. But I was scared at the same time. I immediately excused myself. I went away. It continuously played in my head. But the worst part was not even that. The worst part was, I started questioning. Was it my fault? Did I give him that hint? Did I make him do that? Was I looking for attention? I was confused and I had these questions because I looked up to the person. He was my mentor. Upasana had a similar incident. But the questions that she had, the questions of shame, were the same. The incident doesn't limit to the occurrence of the particular moment. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond that incident because it keeps playing in the head. You want to be sure that that is what happened, but you cannot shake off the feeling of filth. But then you have nothing to prove other than what you felt. I look at it in the sense, why do we feel shame? I look at it uh, from Foucault's theory of panoptically, where women are under surveillance all the time. What it does, it then forces them to discipline the body. 
But is there any surveillance for the perpetrator? Is somebody looking? There's no one. The reason for sexual harassment is sexual objectification of women. And to recognize sexual harassment as punishable or as violence, survivors and perpetrators, class, sex, sexual orientation, race, ethnicity, caste, these are the factors that determine. And this, this is what highlights the power hierarchy. Chapter 3, Rage. I'll illustrate the first question that you can see. Where does rage come from? I'll illustrate this question with a small paragraph that I'm going to read through that I wrote in my dissertation. It was around two decades ago, yet I clearly remember coming face to face with my rage for the first time and the consequence that followed. I was walking on the street with my sisters on a broad daylight and on the main road that was comparatively safer with vehicles flying a residential area and open corner stores that entertained a throng of entitled men sipping tea and puffing smoke. Out of nowhere, a boy casually ran his hands on my arm like I was a toy. My instant instinct was to shout and cuss at him which I did. Immediately, his friends and his casual demeanor became aggressive and they came charging at me, cussing. I froze. I felt helpless. Barely able to speak, I uttered a feeble sorry. At that point in time, it was my only car to remain safe, and I took it. They looked satisfied, smirked, and warned me. You better know your place, and walked away. As they left, I almost sighed with relief when my sister shouted, how can you use such foul language? Anything could have happened and we wouldn't have been able to do anything. I did not understand how I was wrong, but I did understand how unsafe my reaction was. My rage morphed into fear. I jeopardized my sister's safety too. The guilt sunk in and that day a lesson was learned. Never speak up, ne don't make eye contact and ignore if anything in the future happens again. Make safety my priority, not my self-respect. This was my experience, where I scrutinized and raged because, because she is not allowed to just let be. She constantly has to look over her shoulders. Upasana is enraged because she feels helpless. Surika and Paramita, they're not angry. They're scared. Because nothing is in their control. And anything can happen at any point in time. This means that our experiences of rage cannot be homogenized. It manifests differently in different people. And the common factor of rage comes from sexual humiliation. When women are reduced to being inferior just because they're women. And constant occurrence of sexual harassment internalizes how perpetrator sees them as, sees us as. And when this occurs in everyday life, it becomes the perfect tool to control women. It instills fear in them. Chapter 4 is Trigger and Trauma. Now I've lost count as to how many times I've been sexually harassed. Years have passed by, yet all the interviewees, all the women, all six women and I, we still haven't forgotten it. And of course, it has been years, so the impact is lesser comparatively. But we haven't forgotten it. And it just takes a particular incident to just trigger us, to, for us to go back to where we were. However, it never occurred to us that we could actually seek help from a professional. 
Why? Because mental health is still a taboo in the country. And those of, those of us who thought about it, to take help, to seek help, we still procrastinate. But we cannot de deny the impact it has. It is evident once we stop wearing the clothes of our choice. It's evident when we change the daily route of travel back to home, to work, to go to a friend's place, to a restaurant. And altogether, we avoid to go out alone. And it's important to understand that trauma is different for different people, making trauma subjective. There is no one set or particular set that induces fear and anxiety or any behavioral, psychological responses to threat. On different people, it manifests differently. The worst part, however, of sexual harassment having happening almost regularly and every day is that we can and we do get used to the unease. Finally, the last chapter is I'm not the only one. I title this Not With Pride. Instead, this title echoes the stories shared in Hush with confidence within the four walls that carries pain, humiliation, anger, shame, and trauma. But my attempt of doing this dissertation is highlighting these. Definitely, I'm not denying what we go through and how it has impacted us. But I also want to emphasize that it was never our fault. None of us are fault. The women who went through it. The women who are still going through it. The girls who faced this. To emphasize that sexual harassment is not normal. To emphasize that lack of data does not mean that we do not fall prey to sexual harassment. To emphasize that there is there isn't proper policy to address this issue, to emphasize that yet again, it shows us the true status of women in Nepal. I understand that this dissertation perhaps will not even be a slight contribution to the change. But I have to start somewhere. I have to start breaking the culture of silence. And me being here today, is also that part of start. Thank you. Dhani Vats Sraddha Ji Lai. Awa Hami Lai. Kloro Pana Archa. Tapai Hero Prasna Ji Kya Sa. Kei Sa Bhani. Sraddha Ji Ko Prasna Ji Ma Kei Kamae Sa Bhani. Tapai Hero Dini Sa Bhani Sa. Asa Kei Sa Bhani. Research question mainly my the culture of silence for around one of the two. Because it is an autoethnography, my dad has self got that heavy. Autoethnography, because there isn't a particular way of doing it. So this is the form I chose, right? And it is largely the culture of silence. Like me, that was majorly why there is culture of silence around sexual harassment. If you largely take questions. There are questions there. I mean, um, I, I could see how you can use the word autoethnography to, to uh, describe your entire research. But once you have a research corpus, your research corpus, which consists of six interviews you've done with people who are not yourself. Mm -hmm. I was having a little um, kind of, as I said, I, I can understand the, how it, it can be described as autoethnography, but did you think about not using that term to describe the method you employ? You know, in many ways, 
lot of people uh, do research which uh, around the room we've done all kinds of interviews with all kinds of people and uh, although some of it might lead to an autoethnographic research project a lot of times it is not an autoethnographic mm -hmm. research project in your case if 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 we let's say if we just say uh, of the seven cases one is autoethnography or let's say way number one so what justifies your use of the term autoethnography right? that's my question one and question two thing and what you gave us is a structural outline of your dissertation but uh, you didn't give us any ethnography like let's say i mean chapter three man i was I, I could follow that you had a set of questions for each chapter that you were trying to answer in each of those chapters. Right? Mm -hmm. But I was trying to think, let's say, I was trying to imagine what the text of that particular chapter might have read like. Mm -hmm. You didn't give any sense of that to us. Do you think, you know, or, or could you do that? I mean, could, could you actually read some of your own text to us so that we begin to see, um, see what lovely feel the, the texture of that text. Okay. Uh, first question, justify the term autoethnography. Autoethnography, usually it's uh, uh, mostly taken as autobiography also. But uh, autoethnography, when I've written it, it's uh, only drawing parallel with the interviews that I've done. It's not constantly about the interviews. It's the experiences uh, that I've gone through. I've shared my experiences and I have uh, drawn parallel where necessary about the other interviewees. Plus, I've also answered the question based on the studies that have already been done. So that's how I've worked on this. Uh, and for the... No, could, could I just get back to the yes, one? Yes, I mean, the point I'm making is uh, uh, I, I also, in the dissertation and also in the title of today's presentation, you have the autoethnography auto in the title, right? Mm -hmm. So, alternatively, I mean, uh, I mean, when I came to listen to your presentation, I thought this was going to be um, a single experience, your own experience presentation, my other presentation. But it turns out that's not the case, right? Okay. So, uh, alternate title would have, would have been, I am not the only one, sexual harassment in public sphere, only because I'm a historian. I also think of years, let's say um, uh, 2000 to 2015. You know what I mean? You interview with your particular experience set. You boss or not some minutes, okay, boss or only some minutes got some money. I would put that as a as, as a marker to for time. You know, 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 uh, ali, ali so, no, no, I get it, I get it. You could have said just the when I've done up as a yes, I absolutely agree, baby presentation ma completely autoethnography, completely my experiences ma so there are like mixed of interviews, the stories that I've taken also. But uh, I have I haven't uh, I've just put the self in a part of it my so so I've used like two methodologies also the interview my method focus where it's largely it is an autoethnography but i could not uh, this is something that uh, was a constant feedback from my supervisor also autoethnography i cannot only write about my experiences i cannot surround the dissertation on my experiences it has to be validated by the studies so the interviews and the studies that i've done that were that were validating the experiences and the reasons were giving reasons to what I was talking about. So it does justify you using the term autonomy. Mm -hmm. That answers your question. Yeah. What, what was the second thing? Uh, second, the uh, third chapter. Mm -hmm. All right, third exact So, that was only so right. I mean, I don't know I mean, usually, uh, I mean, let me put it this way. Um, when a presentation is based on a dissertation, I expect to hear text from the dissertation being presented here. So, I say, as a mere dissertation, I have a chapter, and the chapter is the title of And these are the um, themes uh, in each chapter that I try to uh, focus on. But the content of the chapter is just the one. Let's just for example, so I have a range of chapters. 
if you are given exactly what these other six people also told you, the words, so anthropological ethnography, mm. you can see the code in the sense of the code in the sense of if it's a text being read, the mm. text is the experience that convey to you, you can see that 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 presented, summarized form. Ma. Those are the chapters, those are the content, that is what I've written actually. So that you might even condense form, ma, not literally reading it uh, from the table, so dissertation. That's what I did. The reason for me to doing that is because your conversation cost on seven, if it doesn't become in terms of conversation and understanding in a very simplistic way, it somehow uh, I felt that the audience may not be able to, uh, they, may, they, may, they may lose interest. So my little, whatever I presented, those are all the content of the chapters in my dissertation. And here are the examples of chapter two, I read the paragraph that I wrote for my dissertation itself. So if I, uh, if I had I read it, uh, I thought, uh, that won't fit well. So I actually summarized the crux of what I did in each of the chapters. Unfortunately, this culture of silence is there despite of women like us, people like me who are still aware. Because as a woman, the culture of silence. So, because how you condition. So, the way we are going to be able to do it, we are going to be able to retaliate. Kare, those boys literally came charging at me. And that was just one of the incidences. So, automatically, as, as a young teenager, 15, 16 year old, 
त्यो इन्सिडेन्ट त्यो एजमा त्यो छाप बस्यो भने हाउ डी कम अप अनि त्यो भन्ने कसलाई त्यो सेयर गर्ने कसलाई हामीले आफ्नो पेरेन्ट्सलाई सेयर गर्न मिल्छ वी डोन्ट टक अबाउट दिस आफ्नो फ्रेन्ड सर्कलमा कुरा गर्ने हो फ्रेन्ड सर्कलमा कुरा गर्दाखेरि उहाँहरूको र आफ्नो एउटै एज सर्कलमा के एडभाइस दिन्छ वी गोन टू सेयर आर एक्सपिरियन्सेस द्याट्स अबाउट इट वी गोन टू सेयर द पेन द्याट्स अबाउट इट हुज गोन टू टक होइन यस्तो गर्नुपर्छ यो गर सेफ गर्नलाई यो हुन्छ दिस इज नट योर फोन सो अल द्याट त्यो कुराहरू पनि कन्सिडर गर्नुपर्छ मेरो एउटा चाहिँ जस्तो अब तपाईँले चाहिँ तपाईँ अघि पनि भन्नुभयो अब भन्न चाहिँ तर मलाई चाहिँ अलिकति जस्तो म मात्र एक्लो होइन भन्ने जुन निष्कर्ष निकाल्नु भयो त्यो निष्कर्ष त अब त्यो कुनै नयाँ निष्कर्ष होइन जस्तो लाग्यो मलाई चाहिँ होइन त्यो चाहिँ एभ्री तपाईँले कोहीसँग चाहिँ एभ्री गर्लसँग चाहिँ गफ गऱ्यो भने होइन त्यो निष्कर्ष त नौलो होइन त्यसैले चाहिँ यो डिजिटेसन्सबाट चाहिँ तपाईँको नौलो कुरा चाहिँ के हो तपाईँको चाहिँ होइन त्यो चाहिँ अलिकति भन्न मिल्छ कि सो नौलो कुरा भनेको नि तपाईँको फाइनल आइडिया नि तर सरप्राइजिङली बिकज यो नयाँ कुरा होइन द्याट एभ्री टाइम इज ह्यापनिङ तपाईँले भन्नु हरेक वुमनले कुरा गऱ्यो भने यो कुरा निकाल्छ तर खै त पर्छ खै त लगाउन के पनि छैन डेटै छैन आई रिच आउट टू नेसनल वुमेन कमिसन आई रिच आउट टू के भन्छ यहाँको ब्युरो स्टाटिस्टिक्स वी डोन्ट ह्याभ डेटा बेस्ड अन दिस स्पेसिफिकली सो न्यू थिङ इज टू प्रोड्युस द नलेज द पोइन्ट अफ अब सबैसँग यो कुरा गरेर दिस इज अल्सो पार्ट अफ युअर नलेज प्रोडक्सन डुइङ दिस डेजिटेसन इज पार्ट अफ नलेज प्रोडक्सन सो द्याट इज वट हेभ वट इज न्यू पार्ट अफ डुइङ नलेज प्रोडक्सन अदर देन द्याट बिकज डकुमेन्ट भएको छैन डकुमेन्ट नहुने बित्तिकै डेटा नहुने बित्तिकै नभएको कुराहरू त होइन नि कुरा भइरहेको छ तर खोइ त त्यो कुरा भएको कहाँ देखिरहेको छ के भइरहेको छ त्यो कुरा जहिले पनि विद इन द फोर वर्ल्डमा मात्रै भयो के भएको छ त्यसो भए भएको कुरालाई चाहिँ तपाईँले चाहिँ यो एज अ डकुमेन्टको रूपमा ल्याएको भन्नु नलेज प्रोडक्सन भन्नु नि नलेज प्रोडक्सन बिकज जस्तो सामान्य रूपमा लिइरहेको छ नि नेपालमा त्यो सामान्य रूपमा लिनु भएन एभ्रीडे भइरहेको छ मतलब सामान्य होइन नि यु कि नट कन्सिडर दिस नर्मल र त्यो लेभलसम्म पुग्नलाई एभ्रीडे भइरहेको छ वी किप इग्नोरिङ त्यो इग्नोर गर्दा गर्दा नै वी थिङ्क इट इज नर्मल बट इट्स नट नर्मल इट इट बिकम्स नर्मल टू एन एक्सटेन्ड दैट म आज फेरि बिइङ सेक्सुअल हेरा सो मेनी टाइम्स अब यति बानी पर्छ कि कहिले कहीँ एकदम सामान्य कसैले छोयो भने हे जस्तो हुन्छ सो द्याट इज अ भेरी स्केरी प्लेस टू बी मानसिकताले नियत एउटा नियतले मान्छेलाई यहाँनिर निर्देशन गरिरहेको हुन्छ मानसिक रूपमै पहिला त्यो खालको मनसाय आएको हुन्छ अब यसलाई हाम्रो तपाईँको चाहिँ शिक्षाले हाम्रो तपाईँको चाहिँ विभिन्न अब गुम्बा होला तिहार होला मन्दिर हाम्रा चाहिँ समाजमा विभिन्न समूहहरू छ भने चाहिँ तर राम्रा कुराहरू पनि हामीले अभ्यास गरेनौँ अब तपाईँ हामीले सुन्दै आयौँ भने बौद्ध दर्शन भित्र त्यो पञ्च स्कन्द दर्शन भन्ने छ यहाँ कर्म बन्धन के हो भन्ने कुरोलाई त्यो पाँचवटा स्कन्द अन्तर्गत कर्म बन्धन चाहिँ के हो भने बुझाउन खोजेको तर यस्तो कुरा हामीले सानैमा है सिक्न पाएको भए बुझ्न पाएको भए मान्छेको मनस्थिति त अर्कै बन्छु नि त अब यस्ता राम्रा कुराहरू हामीले खोज्न सकेनौँ हाम्रो ज्ञान भित्र पाएन तपाईँ हाम्रै सेरो फेरोमा भएका छौँ सन्दर्भ भित्र पाएका छौँ अब परिणाम त अहिले आएको छ हेर्नुहोस् त्यस्तो खालको एक्सनको रूपमा आएको छ अब यो कसरी यो चाहिँ सम्भव होला देख्नु भएको छ अहिले चाहिँ अभ्यासबाट त यो नियन्त्रण न्यूनीकरण हुने त म देख्दिन हेर्नुहोस् यस्ता व्यवहारहरू हेर्नुहोस् होइन अब यसलाई 
नियंत्रण करने को लागी नियमन करने को लागी अब कानूनी हिसाब से वही अब दिखाएँ ना किस तरह के सामान वो दिखा सही ना लगे सही अब संस्कार का हिसाब से शिक्षा में तो सही जानी अब पारिवारिक हिसाब में तो सही जानी अन्य विषय में क्या सोचने वाले सही हैं आप अपने विद्यता को पार करो इस संबंधित निकाय और लाइक क्या सिफारिश करने वाले हैं अब व्यक्तिगत रूप में बनी की आने अनुन सामने दस्तावेज़ अब मैं पहला तो लॉर पॉलिसी to address this specific issue on the journey itself, you know, kina ki ab hami as lay people, jab the incident comes up, we can either immediately react or complain about it. Tera proof le hami burden auto mein pade. Bystander standards has to support us. Whoever it be. I think maybe there's cost of that stuff. Women go because I identify as a woman, so maybe women go out ethnic group or whatever. But there are more people who are vulnerable, especially harass women. Not the only one. There are non-binary people. There are people from the LGBTI community, disabled people. We need to have our caste, our community, different religion. We need to again the idea of the intersectionalities are very important. So completely the intersectionality can help. So other studies, there's so much of studies to be done. Women ne ho bane ro, homogenize hamde gwaare ro, okay, yo yo solution ho sakta hai. These are the things bane ro, hamde ke bhanna mil ro maay de. Cultural level bata, family bata needs to talk about it. Yo ki ho ta? It largely relates with sexuality, okay? Tar this ko la comfortable ho ho sa. Ki ho ta? Ki ho sa? Ki na is to bhanna? How do you react to it? Mainly the me, if at the most you cannot prevent anything happening to your child, you can educate your child, prepare your child. Because most of us when we go through sexual harassment, it immediately becomes, was it my fault? To the the culture around so to see come for it. It's never your fault. The moment you are uncomfortable means you are sexually harassing, you should not be okay. So there are different layers and many other things that are going to make this. So I don't know if you are watching this, this is the solution. I feel it would be a little difficult to do that. So I would like to underline that the four girls are going to be in the class. And they are going to be in the class. And they are going to be in the class. छह जाने छह नहीं तो वही जाना पड़े बार पांच बार जाना पड़े स्पीच में डायरेक्ट हो गई तो तब तो फिर ये जो छह नहीं मेथड्स जैसे तो फिर ये क्या बोलता हूँ कि ना वहीं अंतिम ये लोगों को एज और कास्ट उन्हें ऑफ ब्रिंगिंग है ना तीन लोग सब कोई उन्हें ऊपर से ये रिएक्ट वर्सन यूनिवर्सिटी को क्राइटेरिया इज मैक्सिमम सिक्स पीपल तीन बंदा बड़ी बंदा मिल जाएगी सो मिनिमम वो स्पोर्ट मैक्सिमम इज सिक्स यू कैन नॉट डू मोर देन दैट मास्टर्स वो देखते हैं शुरू में इनिशियली माय आइडिया वाज डूइंग फोर बिकॉज़ आई थॉट पूरा बंदा गा रहा हूँ साइड विल बी ट्रिगर टॉकिंग विथ देम तो आई � because age को पूरा हम सब फिर तो consent को पूरा हम सब फिर इसमें अब है तो sensitivity को पूरा हो अन्य safeguarding को पूरा हम सब तो because then it is an auto ethnography and I am a working woman so मुझे तो इस हाथ में जो democratic है वो experiences same way ले with my lived experiences some of their lived experiences like parallelly 
Mainly it was uh, to do with, so I had a questionnaire in Google, okay? Largely we could select anybody who, uh, who's gone through this experience and where the criteria was working women, Nepali, working women living in Nepal. Sample, sample thing, random or random? random. Um, Auto ethnography is largely my day use what it is self and memory. So, auto ethnography is a fairly new methodology, right? Now. It can get very confusing. So, there's uh, just the auto methods are used, got that okay, it is this, it is this, it is this. What happened when I was trying to research about this auto ethnography? It was very confusing. And different ethnographers define auto ethnography as different. It's not one particular way, but what it is as a researcher that you're trying to do. I have lived experiences already down the project. I have lived experiences that validate for the project. I have definition of auto ethnography. That is self life in the center of the middle. And other methods were memory. Memory, like we call them, there are like flash bulb memories. So these these were different methods that I used. I can recommend like few books because I think about the because there are different auto ethnographers because inside a um, inside a community inside uh, who's living in the community go dinsa because it's outside a perspective for a dinsa because it's actual self narrative dinsa. Sorry, <laughs> Still, <laughs> 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 So these are like you just so the way I've used uh, done my research is autoethnography largely that becomes a central part since I mirror lived experiences sir, and to capture those nuances I've chosen autoethnography right now up to I've cited all the authors it's not just my experience autoethnography experience so cited from uh, different uh, authors theories tobacco uh, news your sexual harassment largely might have to depend on online news and depend on the to get the information. On the interview, the only interview part was to validate because I have data. I have barely data. I data. I have no official data. I have particularly your topic. So, what I did was uh, my individual experiences on all the women they were like working, living in Nepal, Nepali women also. For example, how did it start? I'm talking about my issues. Only it becomes supporting that even other women are going through. You think my biasness of Dr. Nagaraya, okay? Do not auto ethnic central criticism, honey, that self lie emphasized about her. So, two bias of Dr. to validate that. That it's not just me who went through it. There are other women in different contexts, some other time went through it, but they're feeling the same. So, that was the reason why. Yo, I, I understand that you, your dissertation is the UK. Mm -hmm. So typically, you UK is the master's dissertation for world limit. Mm -hmm. So the question I'm asking is, your dissertation is about the fact that you have a degree. So, uh, um, so uh, but, but the text yet that you submitted for your dissertation was world limited. Mm -hmm. Now, what's, are you planning to, let's say, put some part of the text that you submitted, elaborate it and put it out as an article. Um, it goes back to what I asked you earlier, which is 
I'm still trying to figure out or imagine what would be the text I would be reading if you were to put out as, a, as an article that is derived from this dissertation. Yes, I do plan to do, but I'm not sure if I'll be focusing on just your dissertation. Because my dissertation got a heavy, a binary perspective. Okay, about just the word limit, I could not use everything. Right? So it becomes a binary perspective. While I was doing readings, during the intersectionality, so the part, I, that is something that I want to work on further. And not just uh, perhaps article, but then you know, book form my learning because I want to bring in the intersectionality of women who go through the Coming from where I come from, in my background, her education and all of that, and another woman who comes from a completely different background, the experience will be different. So it's important to capture that. And a woman who identifies as, for example, a trans woman. Trans woman will be experienced differently. So the policy those are that's very important to have. The Bumujana is not one, it's very important. So I actually want to further book form my research of academic mamate no I feel it has to go to a larger mass. That is something that I'm thinking publisher is ready to support me and ready to publish it, but then I'm looking for resources. So hopefully. You Tobago only slightly out of topics in the other two. Just the Tobago, I will go me to movement like a Tobinity. You Tobin is a cossary thing. Tobin K comments on me to my people, Tobin K to points and kids are Tobago Pizza. I will go Nepal context. So many dissertation that I mentioned already to so pick the thing up. Limited in me to movement, Zossary. Globally, boy, forget about globally. I'm a South Asian country, my name just pick up for you. So, when I question that, I could say, Why ever any funny itching or wrong? So, so I've mentioned few issues that are that, that have been mentioned in the media. They should start with the boy, you know. Yeah, I'm a professor, so I've got lots of uh, educational institutions. So, I've mentioned all of that. Tora, can news my IO, news my IO, because you're right. So that is also one part of culture of silence that I've mentioned. Okay? The kino all right. Kino, why it hasn't picked up? I'm not sure. I'm not sure why it did not pick up. But I also feel it has a lot to do with power hierarchy. Who is being blamed? To consider sexual harassment or the offense as an offense and harassment, where does the perpetrator belong from? Full caste, ethnicity, race. That determines a lot of things. And I believe that to be true. I'm really bad about it. Because Jotibani Nama, sir, I summer into movement map. It's been high high profile name for me, sir. And it just remains as alleged. Somebody was accused. Allegedly, the person did this, this. But there are so many clear cut articles, man. If you read, if you go through it, it clearly mentioned what else. The cross questions have been evident. Forget about uh, proving guilty to HD. It just dies out. So I think it has a lot to do with. Thank you so much.